Hello everyone. Welcome to West Connect, connecting you with the art of data visualization and storytelling. My name is Sagar Kapoor. I'm part of customer success team at Tableau. So West Connect is a weekly global Tableau community which helps you get inspired, motivate, and participate in Tableau community and upskill you with, with, uh, with the help of our Tableau champions, Tableau ambassadors all over the world. We have a YouTube channel. Go ahead, subscribe to it. Some great content waiting for you. We have a LinkedIn group. Go ahead, connect to each other and learn from each other. And also go ahead and bookmark Tableau learning path, which will help you to get started with Tableau. It's a consolidation of all the Tableau resources. So just go ahead and bookmark this page. Also a shout out to mentoring meetups. If you are someone who wants to go ahead and mentor someone, if you want to go ahead and help someone to improve their data visualization and storytelling skills, just go ahead and be a mentor on mentoring meetup. With that, let me go ahead and introduce our speaker for today. He's a Tableau Zen master, and I'm honored to have it on Wisconnect. So Tim's first version of Tableau was version seven back in 2014. Since then, he's consulted and trained a range of clients whilst working for the information lab in the UK. He's a Tableau Zen master and runs a Tableau channel that shares Tableau, explains then when not using Tableau, he's a proud dad and an F1 enthusiast who loves fancies himself as a creator, gamer, podcaster, and a drone hobbyist. So with that, I will hand it over to Tim to talk about the best version of Tableau most people are using. Tim, over to you. Great, thank you. Um, I think I, yeah, perfect. I can share my screen, excellent. And if I just share screen one, okay, great. Um, can everyone see my screen? I don't know if there's an easy way for everyone to just tell me that and uh, make sure it's mm. coming up okay. Yes, Tim, I can yeah, see your perfect screen right now. Yeah, perfect, good, okay. Excellent, so thank you, thank you for the introduction. Um, yeah, I'm Tim, and um, I'm gonna be talking about yeah, the best version of Tableau most people aren't using. Um, this is an interesting topic of mine because um, since, since I think the middle of last year, I've been um, really interested to sort of try and see where Tableau was gonna take its future having been acquired by Salesforce. And obviously many of you will know Salesforce is a SaaS company and there's no sort of back end to Salesforce that people can get to. And so I've always wondered, um, you know, there's this sort of interesting friction between the way Tableau develops its products um, for its own uh, online offering, which is Tableau Online, versus the solution they offer for on-premise um, versions of Tableau through Tableau Server. And then added to that, you've also got the complication of subscriptions um, and the different licensing tiers. So Creator, Explorer, and Viewer. And so what, I'm, what I've seen over the last year and what I definitely saw and heard at conference is that Tableau's big focus is to bring as much of the uh, capability that it's, we've, we've used over the last few years entirely to the browser. And so that's essentially what I'm going to be talking about and how Tableau Online is a really important part of that. And in my opinion, this is my opinion, <laughs> I think it actually offers the best experience for most users of Tableau. And it's definitely something that if you have the opportunity to use and get used to, then it's something you should definitely jump on because I think you might be pleasantly surprised how far you can get and you know what you can do. You can't do everything, but I'll get into that in a bit. We've done intros, so I won't bother with intros. Um, yeah, I work at the Information Lab, you know about my website, so I'll get straight into the um, uh, content here. And so what I've got here is just the pricing essentially. So Tableau Online is essentially exactly the same as Tableau Server. There's only one key difference. Uh, Tableau Online here on the right-hand side, so I'll just highlight it for you. Um, this, this is essentially a hosted solution by Tableau. So instead of you calling up your IT uh, team and asking them to provision and install Tableau Server on a server for you, and then you know give you all the controls, you essentially get in touch with Tableau, and uh, within minutes, they set you up a Tableau Online instance. Now, 
a Tableau Online instance is the equivalent of a single site in Tableau Server. So immediately there, you have a little bit of restrictions on Tableau Server. You can create as many sites as you want. Um, but ultimately, it's exactly the same uh, offering. The only difference in price is essentially the hosting cost, because of course, Tableau have to pay for their hosting um, that they carry out on AWS uh, and a bunch of other resources and you know things like the team that runs um, the Tableau Online uh, setup, who also coincidentally run Tableau Public. So they already pretty 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 used to that um, but everything else is pretty much the same the only real th key thing here is going to be these two prices here so every everything else costs exactly the same and um, it's pretty it's a pretty sort of decent offering and actually it's probably the quickest way if, if you needed tableau in the next 10 minutes um it, it could be done with tableau online i think with tableau server in any organization we're talking more in days and weeks than we are minutes and seconds okay um and so the interesting question is what do tableau recommend why why do they recommend tableau online um and if i just go to this next slide i've just taken this out of a document i'll share this uh, deck with um, everyone here and there's some links that has all this laid out and i've just taken the slide about tableau online essentially um tableau really pitches this as a software as a service which is obvious because they're running it all for you you just log in use it uh, you don't have to worry about what's going on in the background like I said, it's done in minutes. Um, maintenance uh, and upgrades and scalability are all managed by Tableau. Essentially, the whole Tableau Online infrastructure is actually one big shared platform that runs on AWS. Um, of course, if you know about cloud computing, you'll know that AWS is a, pretty much the biggest player if not the most important player in the cloud market. And so Tableau leans on that infrastructure to deploy Tableau Online around the world. Um, it's pretty easy to incorporate, um, you know, a whole range of devices and data sources into the platform, and you can connect to a whole range of data sources, both in the cloud and on premise. I'll come to that in a second. Um, and so they have a sort of list of uh, things on the right hand side. And, and what I find interesting is many of these reasons on the right hand side are typically what CIOs are thinking about day to day. Uh, is your data predominantly hosted in the cloud? A lot of businesses are heading that way. Okay, uh, your company runs its software in the cloud, preferably as a service. As um, a lot of um, sort of backend uh, systems have, have turned to uh, cloud solutions, you you've started to see that a lot of um, systems themselves run as a service. So, for example, Salesforce is a really good example. It's a CRM. You don't see the backend. Essentially, that's just a CRM service. You log in, you do you do your work, and you you get out. A lot of companies are doing the same thing internally with their own systems. So to do that, they also run their platforms in the cloud. Okay. Um, sometimes you might have a mix of internal and external users. This is actually an increasingly a big request because uh, businesses are no longer just, you know, keeping data internally. Uh, we've sort of gone to the next stage of maturity where we're starting to share data with some of our partners that we work with in the B2B context. And sometimes we might actually have customers that we share data with. So that's becoming increasingly important as well uh, for some businesses. And then uh, you frequently access analytics on the go, uh, mobile. Um, essentially, the key thing here is that the AWS um, uh, infrastructure allows Tableau to deliver this uh, pretty seamlessly. If you've ever used Tableau uh, mobile with a Tableau online instance, you'll notice it's just considerably smoother and quicker than using it with a Tableau server, which can be located anywhere in the world. And then last thing, you don't want to deal with software or hardware configurations, and you want ap your application to scale as demand grows. And this is really the key one. A lot of organizations um, really just want to get the work done. They don't want to have to become infrastructure experts. Uh, companies like uh, Amazon, Google, have uh, and Microsoft have put forward solutions to try and cover this off. So increasingly, you're finding companies want to do less and less of infrastructure and more and more of solutions. Okay. And so how does that, how does that look for um, Tableau Online? Um, well, we've got this sort of very uh, basic diagram again from Tableau. Essentially, there's this sort of global front door. If you go to online.tableau.com anywhere in the world, it's one central place. And essentially, depending on um, the Tableau Online instance that you have, um, you'll be forwarded to a particular region. So let's say I go in with my email, tim.nguena at tableau.tim.com. Uh, it will see my email and it will know from that email address that I'm actually supposed to be using the Tableau Online instance in uh, EU. Um, so that's going to be, for me, the one I use all the time with clients in the UK is this one. Okay. A lot of the, a lot of the online instances do tend to be in America though, just because that was one of the earlier ones that was there. And so Tableau has lots of geographical um, 
locations for these. I won't go through this in detail, but you can see they've covered off a lot of the key locations around the world. Again, these mirror AWS locations. And so another important thing is that you'll often find that these are exactly the same uh, locations that are, again, typically used in most cloud services. So uh, you might choose to choose one of these to be sort of geographically located next to your other cloud uh, activities. And so at a, just a very basic level, Tableau's own Tableau Online infrastructure looks very different to a typical Tableau server um, setup. Um, this is a diagram again from Tableau. Essentially, each Tableau Online instance is redundant across multiple availability zones. Uh, that's not something that you typically get with Tableau Server because with Tableau Server, what you typically have is if you have a high availability setup, you'll have a system set up across, um, you know, two servers. But I, I highly doubt that those two servers are ever in sort of geographically um, uh, independent availability zones. And whilst um, in this case, we're talking about regions and availability zones, um, just assume that generally um, Amazon can connect to these two things incredibly quickly. And so there's a, there's a really good level of redundancy in the way that this is set up. Um, and now the other thing to bear in mind is that Tableau also needs to be running a bunch of services. One of those is something like Tableau Bridge, which allows you to connect Tableau Online to your internal data sources like Excel. Cell, CSVs, um, you may be databases that are, you know, behind a firewall. And at the same time, it also needs to sort of maintain connections to data sources out in the real world, however that might be. And so Tableau themselves actually use Tableau Online um, to do their work. So um, they wouldn't be a decent company if they didn't sort of practice what they preach. So this is actually Tableau's own setup um, of Tableau Online. This is their own sort of instance that they run for themselves, if that makes sense. And it's exactly the same flavor as um, anyone can get, essentially, um, when they sign up to Tableau Online. It's sort of no different. And so um, at a very basic level, you'll see here that I've uh, got Tableau Bridge mentioned right at the top. And uh, essentially, this is like the uh, sort of the connector. It allows um, Tableau to connect uh, lots of data sources that are internal. And these will always be internal. There's, no, there's sort of not everything will ever go to the cloud because it doesn't necessarily make sense. And from a security perspective, you might have things like research and development that are typically best kept in-house. But then you might have other activities that are sort of well suited to the cloud where you need a lot more throughput and availability and horsepower. And so, of course, you have this sort of mix of data sources depending on your individual needs of analytics or redundancy or whatever it is. And then, of course, you've also got other data sources that are available in the public cloud, essentially. So these are um, the, these are sort of these are sort of the same, but um, in Tableau's own sense, they're sort of running in a slightly different way. So for all intensive purposes, let's just assume this is all data sources that are outside of Tableau's sort of infrastructure. They're in the cloud, either in a private cloud or a public cloud. Either way, um, Tableau is connecting to them. And so this is what they use internally to, to 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 sort of run Tableau. And this is alongside an internal Tableau server infrastructure that they do. So they have two pretty large Tableau servers themselves, and they sort of manage this um, for pretty much everyone. Uh, a couple of more slides and we'll hop into uh, the actual product itself and I'll start to walk through a couple of reasons why I think it's a slightly better offering. Um, if I go to this page, this is Tableau Trust. So this is essentially a page that tells you about all the downtime um, that's available um, for Tableau Online and Tableau Public. So if you're wondering why Tableau Public has gone down, if you go here, you'll you'll find the reason very quickly. And um, if there's an issue with Tableau Online as well, you'll come here and you'll find it very quickly. And what's really good about this is that it's 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 very very fast. When something starts to uh, behave badly, um, they're always on top of it before um, you probably even reported it to them. So if you just go to this page, you notice something, you'll typically find an issue here, and it's. In their best interest to fix that as quickly as possible and of course because they've built the product they're actually able to do this uh, incredibly well um, if I may say so, probably better than most of your own IT infrastructure teams that run their own version of Tableau on-premise. In that use case, what will typically happen, I, I've, I've, I, I man a support desk myself, so I know what happens here. Um, something goes wrong with the server. Um, you get the best person you've got internally to go have a look at it. That might take a couple of hours. Uh, they'll have a look at it for about half an hour. Uh, by that time, they realize that maybe this problem is a little bit more complicated. They'll then nudge another support desk um, who's like a more central sort of high level support desk. That support desk might then have an escalation system that goes through tier one, tier two, tier three. Tier three, tier two might actually be Tableau themselves. And then through that process, depending on how could it complex the, the or simple the issue is, um, it can take typically, you know, 
anything from a couple of days to maybe a couple of weeks to solve some pretty challenging issues. And during that time, obviously users aren't experiencing the best thing. And so uh, companies end up spending a lot of effort running a dev instance and a prod instance just so they can test these things before they release it to the business and it causes sort of a lot of business disruption. Uh, Tableau's equivalent of that is they actually run their own test instance of Tableau Online ahead of the public release. So they're using it for their day-to-day -day work and once it's ready essentially Tableau Online gets the latest and best version of Tableau as soon as that version comes out. Actually typically a week before um, the actual release of the product. So if you pay attention to Tableau Online, you'll notice there's normally a downtime a week before the new version of Tableau goes online. That's how I tend to find out <laughs> the new version's coming out. So um, that's that's sort of a, a little glimpse as to sort of how much Tableau is sort of monitoring everything that's going on. And don't forget, there are thousands upon thousands of customers who are using um, this platform. I'll go to a document that sort of touches on on some of that information in a little bit. So I've sort of very briefly touched on the infrastructure just to give some context as to what's happening in the background um, so that now when I switch over to Tableau Online itself and I just start to walk through this experience, you'll sort of have a better context for why I think this is actually a better way of using Tableau and it's probably going to become the best way of using Tableau by the end of this year. Him. So let me go over to this next tab. So here I'm just running in Tableau Online. Now, everything I'm doing is in the browser. I'm not going to open up Tableau Desktop. I'm not going to open up Tableau Prep. I do actually have them open because I'm doing some, some work for a client. Um, but it's lunchtime here in the UK. So we're going to do everything here just through the browser. So I'm going to start by going to uh, my Explore tab. And you'll notice here that you've got the option to start a new project, a new workbook, and a new flow. So the great thing with 2020.4 is it brought about the ability to start with data prep in Tableau prep uh, in the in the browser directly. Um, Tableau workbooks have always been editable through the browser. They've always been able to actually for the last probably three years, it's been pretty straightforward to start a workbook here. So this isn't a radically new thing, but I'll come to that in a little while. Okay. When we go to connect to a flow, we get the same connectors that we got in Tableau Prep um, for desktop. So the really fun fact here is that Tableau Prep initially was launched for desktop, but it was actually, in fact, a browser-based tool that was ported to the desktop for its release. So it was it was sort of never designed for desktop. It was primarily designed for the web. And so when it was released on the web, you tend to find that the web experience is identical to the desktop experience because it was never a desktop product. And secondly, it's a lot faster because it's running on proper infrastructure. Now, if we go back to that infrastructure question, remember Tableau is running this infrastructure themselves. So not only are they going to be able to optimize Tableau prep to work really, really well on their own infrastructure, but they also have the added intelligence of knowing what thousands upon thousands of customers are doing across a range of Tableau Online instances. So when you start to have that level of intelligence about how people are using your product, you can optimize the machine and what's happening in the interface to a much higher degree than you can for an on-premise customer who you essentially just have to ship out a version of your product, pray that it works, wait for the bugs to come in, and then start to make the changes in, in, in reverse. And so Tableau do react a lot faster to bugs here on Tableau Online than they do for Tableau Server because the Tableau Server patches have to go through, to, through things like testing, whereas Tableau Online, they can see that almost in real time as the issues are happening. Let me go ahead and connect to a data source. I've got one here on my desktop for this connect. I've actually got two data sources. So I'll start with the Excel file first. And I'm uploading Excel file because we all know Superstore. That's a pretty straightforward data set to work with. Um, but I'll just let this load up. Um, it's just a file upload. There's nothing sort of fancy about that. Some of you might ask, what about databases? Yes, of course you can connect to databases as well. The key thing here is that those databases need to have web compatible drivers because this is all happening through the browser, of course. So um, if you don't see your database here, it's likely that that database isn't sort of native for the web in that sense. So you typically won't find the full list that you get in desktop. But again, I'll come back to that uh, very shortly. Let me just do something very quickly. I'll just bring in orders here and I'll just uh, sort of uh, build out a very simple flow. You'll see that this works exactly like uh, desktop, you almost can't tell that it's actually uh, any different. So what I will do is uh, let's say I will do a custom split on this field here. Let's just go in here and um, let it, let's split values. Let's do an automatic split and uh, let that run out. Okay. And then whilst that's, whilst that's, while that, whilst that is doing that, 
I will, I'm going to add another connection here just whilst that's going in the background. And I'm going to bring in my um, shape file. This shape file actually contains um, the shape files for America. So this is a Superstore, the American data set. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring that in. It's uploading that whilst it's doing the other thing in the background. I'm just using it like I would use desktop. And believe it or not, it's pretty much the same experience because um, prep desktop can sometimes be sort of more laggy than this. So it's stuck on the upload, which is interesting. Of course, uh, as you give a demo, that's when all the bugs appear. So here we are. I don't know why the upload is being um, very, very slow. Um, it can't be my internet connection, but I'll just wait for that to finish. And once that is done, thank you. Tableau will look at that and it will analyze this, the shape file. Now, that was a zip file I uploaded. I didn't sort of open it up, unzip it, and then upload it. I just gave it the zip file because that's what uh, it's expecting here in the browser. So uh, you can see that it's got our shape file there. It's brought it in and it can see all the different um, sort of uh, information in our shape file. So we can just go ahead and create a clean step. And I'm just going to go ahead and join these two. Now, what I don't know is um, where the information about the countries is so i'm just going to wait and see if i can find that um and we'll just wait for this to finish hopefully this will happen reasonably fast um if not i might be pushing my luck just give it a couple of minutes if not i'll sort of i'll leave this running and i'll create another data source and then i'll come back to it there we go. It's crunched through the zip file. It didn't. It doesn't seem to have read the zip file correctly, though. Um, I think it's still loading. To be honest, you can see this loading screen. So, uh, I could have picked a really bad time to do this demo as well, because uh, for context, I remember we talked about the different regions. Um, I'm actually in the American instance here. So 10AX means the American instance. I think this is, I don't know if it's Arizona. Um, and uh, if you look at the time now, that's roughly when uh, most of America's just got up uh, for at least the West Coast. Um, the East Coast has just woken up um, and things, people are starting to come online. And then towards the end of the day, um, the rest of the US will come out. So you see these sort of peaks and troughs sometimes with performance. Um, it is it is being buggy here. So let me let me just remove this. Let's see what happens here. Let's remove this very quickly and remove this join. I'm just gonna uh, try and do add another clean step and just see if we can get it um, kicked up. Okay, no no fields to display. That's rather strange. What did I do here? I did the trim. That should be everything. Let's give it a second. There we go. Started to wake up. There we go. It's a little bit better. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to publish this and save it and see um, see if that sort of helps things along. Um, you'll probably wonder, well, what if I close this browser tab and don't hit save? So let me just do that and show you. So I just hit the close tab. I didn't save anything. So let's go to explore. And um, if I go to my explore, if I actually just go home and go to my recents, and if I just uh, let me just make sure I'm going to the right place here. So let's do this list view and let's go to default. And you'll see it puts in the default folder because the default is like the um, desk of Tableau, if that makes sense. So you'll see here that uh, you have um, a data set here and April 30th, 104. You can see I did a test this morning and it all worked fine. <laughs> so let's go back into that flow and see where it saved that. Uh, it saved exactly where I left off. So it's got that sort of capability built in. It doesn't have that for desktop yet, but we're going to get there eventually. And now it's a lot zippier, thank goodness. Um, what I will do, because uh, we're just, have, just conscious of time, I was going to join this onto the shape data set. That is still connected. Um, I'm tempted to not do that. But let me publish this, then we'll try it uh, separately. So... You can publish, again, from the browser directly to a database or to a data source. I'm just going to publish it to a published data source, and let's just have a go at that. When you go to publish, though, it's going to ask you to save the flow in Tableau terms. That's publishing the flow to the server. So I'll go ahead and publish the changes. We'll call this um, VizConnect. Hit publish. Once that's published to the default, it's now going to let me uh, run this flow and try and publish this data source. So now when we hit the run flow, um, you'll see the flow has been published to project default. 
the flow viz connect has been added to the run queue. So when we run the flow, it's not going to um, just run it in front of us. It goes to something called the viz to the job queue. And the job queue is essentially the global task manager for all Tableau Online um, instances, essentially. So all customers are sharing one Tableau Online instance resource. And so everything goes into that queue. And the queue times are pretty, uh, pretty good. So if I just go to jobs on my left-hand side, you'll see that I have a pending uh, job just there. So that's the flow that I just set to run. Now, if you look across this sort of runtime and queue time, um, you'd be hard pushed to find any Tableau Server instance um, that sort of runs in this sort of uh, time. Now, admittedly, my Tableau Online instance is tiny. It's just got me in it. It's not got many uh, people in it, but typically, um, the way this is resourced is based on the number of users you have and the way you get priorities, again, based on when you send the job in and um, some a, a component called resource units, essentially. And so the jobs are pretty run quickly. Um, if you get any errors, it's exactly the same as Tableau Server. And once that's run, obviously, it can publish the data set. Um, but if I just go back to the tab, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and uh, publish this as a data source. So let's select that here. And uh, I'm going to go in here, publish as, um, this is a flow, but if I want to save the output one second, uh, I'm getting a warning here. Let me clear this. Uh, error, all output steps in the flow must point to the same server you are signed into. Yeah, I am signed into this server. So let's try this. And let's put it back in. Okay, today it really has decided to backfire in my face. <laughs> of course, this happens in demo. So I'm signed in on server, so I can't be publishing to a different server because I'm obviously on this server. So um, I have to send this one uh, back to uh, Tableau to try and see well, what's going on here. Why can't I just choose the location that I want? So um, not to worry, I'd had, I had sort of planned for this in the eventuality this might happen. So I've already got a data source that's been published up to the server that was created in Tableau Prep. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go back here and I'm going to go to that data source. So I'm going to go to, uh, let's think it's in the 2020. Mm, yeah, here we go. So these are, these are um, data sources that were essentially um, created. I created them a while back, but they were created in Tableau Prep in the browser. So let's go ahead and connect to this uh, data source. Okay, so this is again, it's the very simple version of Superstore and we can go ahead and just create a new workbook, okay? So let's go ahead and create this and start working with this. Now, the web version of desktop is not as sort of savvy as the prep version. When I close this tab, unfortunately it won't save that. That's not available yet, although it is coming in the near future. Um, I can build views just as normal. And one thing a lot of people will think is that this is actually quite a limited version of Tableau. And I would have said that is true as of, you know, maybe a year ago. But in the last year, there have been some really big steps that Tableau have taken to make this as fully featured as the desktop version of Tableau. And of course, because it's right next to where the data is, if you've got published data sources or database connections that are, you know, published as here as extracts, it's going to work a lot more um, swimmingly. So let's go ahead and and try and do the basic things you might do. Um, you've got the same things like a calculation window. All the same functions are available here. Everything is exactly the same. Uh, we don't have the profit ratio. So let's go ahead and uh, try and calculate that. So let's sum of sales. And I should use a capital S. And let's say sum of profit. Let's do sum of, um, let's do sum again. And sum of thing divided by sum of profit, if I can spell, divided by uh, profit. On time today. It's a Friday. I think that's why. Here you go. So sum of profit, and we can just call this uh, profit ratio. It's a very basic calculation, so I'm sure you know that's already possible. And go ahead in here, and um, what I want to do, what I was going to do, is I was going to change the format for this. But of course, you don't you don't have that uh, here. So you can do things like change the data type and so on and so forth. But you have to be slightly more savvy about where you go to do things. So if I just bring it into the view, let's just put the label on here, and you'll see that you get the aggregated sort of profit um, uh, ratio on here. So what I'll do is I'll just go and format the worksheet and what what I'll do is I'll get a bunch of sort of different options and I can also go and format um, a 
things like numbers and, and all of that very, very easily. So what I will do is let me quickly build out everything, then I'll format everything when it's in the dashboard stage. So let's just build out the classic demo, which is um, city here. And let's put uh, profit on size. And let's put category on color. Where's category? Here we go. So we get um, more dots per city, exactly. And then bring this up a little bit so it's easy to see. And then I'll go make it uh, a white border so we can see the individual dots more clearly. Great. And then the last one I'll do is the classic table that you normally do. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, order date on columns. Uh, let's put sales on ABC to give us a table. And then we'll just sort of burst out this hierarchy a little bit and break that down by customer segment. Where's segment? Here you go. Uh, so we've got the different segments uh, vertically. And then I might also do ship mode um, just to give that a little bit more, um, more of a table. Great. And then let's put this all onto the dashboard and uh, try and get this going. So let's double click all of these. Uh, it's not going to be pretty, I know. Uh, let's see the last one again. There we go. Perfect. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the map on the top left. Here you go. Let me just do this. And that should split these nicely. I'm going to get rid of this because I don't need that there. I'm going to select this view. And uh, what I'm trying to do here is to get it to fill the entire view. Okay. So I'll just go to this little drop down and I can get it to fit the width and that should get it to squeeze in correctly. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty okay. Um, next thing I'll do is I just want to bring in a title. So let's just go in and put this at the top and we'll call this uh, dashboard title. Dashboard title. And uh, I can't spell, but um, Grammarly has my back. So let's that's, a, that's one big advantage. I get spell check <laughs> in Tableau because I'm using the browser. Um, so let's just uh, hit apply, hit OK. Um, that alone is worth moving to the browser for, honestly, um, especially if you can't spell like me. Um, so let's hit OK. And let's push this back up. And I think that's sort of fine. And now we can start to do things like formatting. So let's, 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 um, I'm going to pick this one um, and what we're going to do is we go to format at the very top and you, you get some sort of limited formatting capability. So you can see here I can format the whole entire workbook or I can format animations. Animations is the default option that we get um, when we are working with um, desktop. So this is actually the same place and location for this particular one. It's also got the shortcut, but let's go to the workbook. Okay. And I'm going to change a couple of things here. So in the sheets, I'm going to make this a little bolder and I'm going to make this uh, maybe smaller. So it's a little bit more palatable. It applies a change across the, uh, the whole entire workbook, which is good. And then the titles, I will um, worksheet titles. I will make this bold as well just a little bit better and i'll make them blue and once that's done uh, the dashboard title itself um is up here you go i uh, will make this just bump this up two sizes and i shouldn't really make it all caps but i think i've given it i think what happened with this um dashboard title is i actually didn't use it i used the text box so what i should have done is gone in here and um inserted the dashboard title so um what I what I should have done, I should have done this, sorry. I should have um, ticked this box. So you see here, sorry, for those of you who are wondering where it is. It's just here, there's a little tick box to say show the dashboard title. Again, slightly different to desktop. Then now you can see this is uh, observing my formatting changes, okay? So not quite all the formatting things I want, not quite everything that's perfect. I can get most of the way there, things like layout, formatting. I get all of those features, right? And I can go into the hierarchy. If I go into the individual view and I go to format again, I can get more controls here about how things look. So for example, if I then go to, um, let's say the worksheet, um, you, you get sort of basic items here that sort of pops up. If I go to format again and I go to uh, legends, for example, you can give that a second. Um, I think it sort of appeared behind here. No, let's, have, let's try that again. There we go. Yeah. So the option just switched around essentially. And again, you can change how that looks. So the formatting feels a little bit restrictive. It feels like you have to go somewhere to do something and it's not sort of always organic. And some of the other capabilities like sets, um, you could normally just go in here and just go, uh, you know, go and create a setup here. 
The way you do that here is you have to right click a particular thing. So if you right click one of these, um, you go to uh, the dimension you want, then you go to set, then you can start to create the set. Then what you can do is once you've created the set, you can um, you can sort of edit that set. So what I'll do is uh, I'll add it to the sheet and I put it in here, okay? I think what I did when I selected it, I didn't I didn't choose it properly essentially. So what I what I ought to do is um, when you're building the view, you have to sort of use the view to pre-filter the set, then create the set, and then you're basically doing that. But you don't get the same sort of option to sort of fiddle with the set. And you can see that caught me out a little bit because I'm a little bit rusty myself on this. Um, but what I will say is, look, Tableau is moving in this direction. Um, I think during conference last year, they said um, they're going to be bringing everything to the browser. And I wouldn't be surprised if maybe in two to three years time, uh, this was the only version of Tableau that they had available once it sort of had proper parity with desktop. Primarily because it's just much easier to get this into organizations. You don't have to worry about license keys. You don't have to worry about installations. All of that is managed either through Tableau Online or through Tableau Server if you're still running on-premise. But fundamentally, you get the latest and best experience of Tableau nearly all the time if you're using Tableau Online. And on top of that, if you're using the browser, then you're going to be getting everything as soon as it's available. And again, it's it's well optimized. It's um, it's sort of maintained by Tableau. And it's not perfect. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that, you know, everyone should drop desktop today and start using this today. Um, but it's definitely the best experience, especially if you're a viewer or explorer, where you don't spend much, if any time, authoring anything. Um, the sort of browsing experience on online is just far zippier. Things don't sort of um, get cluggy. Um, all the nice features are sort of well optimized for how they're being used around the world, not just in one company. Uh, and everything's a, a lot smoother. Okay. So um, I think I'll stop there. I'm not going to try and sort of murder the point too much, um, uh, particularly. I think the key message I want to send out is. Listen, if you've um, not used Tableau Online, definitely go and uh, use it. You're probably wondering, how do I do that without paying? Um, a good way to do that is a Tableau Developer Program. So if you join the Tableau Developer Program, uh, once you join the Tableau Developer Program and you go through the process, it's very quick. I think you get an email within a couple of minutes. It then sends you an email saying, would you like access to a developer instance of a Tableau Online site? And that's what exactly what I'm using. What I was actually using here is a test version of um, the server. So you can see here I'm on 2021.2, um, which is a little hint that the dev version also runs in advance of the current release. This version's not out yet, but one of the things you might have seen me uh, be able to create before was a lens when I was in a data source. If I just go back here to explore and I go to 2020, was it 2020.2? No, it's the previous one. Go back. Here we go. And if I just select uh, this one, let's go into that data set and I go in here. You can see here I can create a lens. Now, I don't know what a lens is. <laughs> um, I haven't seen the documentation on it, whatever it is. But because it's a dev instance, you also get the next version of Tableau Online uh, pretty quickly. And um, what it does do is it gives you, um, if I go to users and I just show you sort of the authentication, it gives you one creator, one explorer, and one viewer license in order to do what you need to do. Okay. So it wouldn't be that if you weren't able to. Um, sort of um, sort of do this. So that's that's basically how it works. And I typically use my professional email and then I test with myself. So it's just me on this server essentially. But it's a great way for you to um, sort of get to grips with this, try everything. Everything is sort of unlocked. You don't have to uh, sort of worry about it being locked down. It's a great way if you're honestly only ever going to be using the front end side of Tableau. Well, you've got that pretty much here. Everything is more or less on parity um, with uh, Tableau server and you can even go ahead and test things like setting up authentication if that's something you want practice with so um yeah i'll stop there i'll probably open it up to questions i'll tr i'll try and see if um we've got any questions uh off screen um so um do we have any questions let's just see hey, Tim, thank you thank you for sharing with everyone the power of tab to online so uh, we have one question from tim Yes. And he's asking, uh, how would you deal with the lack of ability to customize, like add corporate font, script, tab command, etc.? Right, right. So I, I'm a bit biased here because I, uh, uh, one of the one of the side effects of uh, 
being part of the um uh the the tablet ambassador program sometimes the zen master program is that you you have some sort of early insights as to some of what might be coming in the future largely because you spend a lot of time moaning to tableau about the lack of these things so i'll tell you personally i've i don't know i've been moaning tableau for years about the lack of customizability through things like templates formatting and um whilst it's still not in the product yet um it's very telling if i let me put it this way there's a reason why most of the new features over the last uh you know six or seven I'll say maybe six or seven months, definitely in the last year, um, have been available simultaneously in the browser and also, um, you know, in desktop and whatever, because the real push has been to get the product into the browser. So whilst that's been happening, there's been a real stale sort of period for anything to do with sort of formatting, design, uh, layout, it's just, just, just been nothing. It's been a sort of a, a dry, dry desert of features. And so um, I'm fairly confident that will be easier to address in a browser than it will be in desktop. And I think that's, that's sort of part, part, part of the hurdle. Now, never buy software or try something based on the promise of future software releases. That's never how to do things. And so for now, the way you get around it is to try and standardize things if, if as much as possible. Maybe have things like starter workbooks with some of those uh, things baked in so people just have to customize things. But it is difficult. You have to really deliberately think about what you're doing, and that's not quite there yet. Um, and so and maybe for editing workbooks, it's a great solution. But if you're starting a brand new workbook like I was trying to do today, you saw I had a couple of challenges. And form the formatting constraints are just when you've built the muscle memory for years of using Tableau, um, especially if you've used it for a while, that's probably going to be a struggle. But for new users who don't know where that stuff is, it's actually not that bad um, because you don't know where the stuff is in the first place. So you don't know. So you don't know what you're missing. So that's a bit of a, a, a get out of jail free card I threw there. It's not really an answer, but it's not really um, uh, it's sort of um, I'm not saying I'm not saying it's not going to happen. I just think it's just not the focus at the moment, if that makes sense. Yeah, thank you, Tim. And just switching. Oh, so, so Tim, so sorry, Tim has just uh, replied to the comparison between server and online, not comparing with desktop. Right. So, in that respect, um, tab online customization versus Tableau server customization. Um, this is something that really only infrastructure teams actually worry about, and there's a bit of friction here because primarily most of the people on a server are actually explorers and viewers. And a lot of the customization doesn't actually isn't actually tailored for them. It's tailored around things like security and governance and organizational structure. But in all honesty, a lot of that doesn't actually benefit the experience per se. So um, whilst there are a lot of things missing, I think the things that matter are actually there. The things that are important are there. And there are lots of companies, especially this year, that are doing the switch the other way around. They're going from Tableau Server to Tableau Online, and there are lots more companies today starting on Tableau Online and never going to Tableau Server, just because that is the barrier between, you know, the customization options between online and server. The gap has gotten a lot thinner, and a lot of the things you used to say, oh, that's not really available, are now available through a bunch of sort of different workarounds and uh, solutions that Tableau have to offer. So hopefully that sort of touches on that. But Tim, just reach out, and we can chat more about that. Perfect. Thank you, Tim, for that. And Tim, I was just saying, just talking about you, right? Mm -hmm. Can you just talk about your Tableau journey? Like you mentioned, yeah. you started yeah. in 2013. Yeah. What was about it, right? And like, yeah. what helped you to go ahead and get into this community? Yeah. So, oh man, it's it's a good good question. Um, I I, I stumbled into this uh, job, if I'm really honest. I worked in social media and marketing before, and I handled data, but it was a very very crude way of handling data in things like Google Sheets and just doing summaries and totals and calling that a report. Um, and then uh, I got an opportunity to just basically work with Tableau very briefly in, in, in a particular sort of topic I was interested in. And uh, one thing led to another. So the, the, the best way I always think to get into this industry is actually to really foster the community and really start to make sort of good connections. Um, not every connection is always worthwhile. Sometimes connections are just connections and actually they're valuable connections because you appreciate people for the expertise they have. 
but in some cases those connections turn into opportunities so in my case i was just lucky that that was the case um having joined the information lab though um i was surrounded by great people so the other thing to do is to make sure you're always surrounded by smart people because naturally what happens is that rubs off on you and you end up picking a lot of knowledge from them so that's uh, thing number two try and surround yourself with people who are really passionate about the product because that will elevate your passion the third thing is try everything do anything you can to get your hands on stuff and just use it it's all too easy to ask questions on um, forums and you know try things on you know various things but the, the, the biggest hurdle is actually just learning how to use it and you don't get that experience you don't get that sort of learning opportunity unless you put your hands to it and for tableau in in in, in most cases there's nearly always a way to try tableau and do stuff with tableau for free. I've talked about the developer program. Uh, again, you don't have to necessarily develop something, but here you get the ability to go in and test things and trial how things work. So that's a great learning opportunity for you to learn the front end interface for server. The back end interface for server, you can download a trial maybe, but make sure that you're you know around for two weeks. Just run it on your laptop. It will run. Um, it's not going to be perfect. It might complain about installing it, but just download it, try it out for a week and then uninstall it and off you go. That's one of the ways I learned it. Or if you have access to a server somewhere, try and ask if you can shadow someone whilst they do work on it. And um, those opportunities don't come far and few between. So when you get them, take them. And then lastly, um, I think more recently, I've been doing a lot of sort of trying outreach, trying to help other people. Um, don't forget where you came from, essentially. So try and help other people who are coming through the journey, because by doing that, they ask you questions that you haven't necessarily thought of. So part of the reason I expose myself to the community is because people ask me questions and I go, oh, yeah, I didn't think of that. What do you do in that use case? And now I've got a learning journey to go and finish and I keep going. And uh, although I find the answer and then I come back and I make a video about it and people think I know everything, actually, it's the other way around. Because I make videos about this stuff, I have to go and learn it. So you're doing me a favor because I have to learn stuff to be able to sort of share that content. And so um, the relationship works both ways. So um, those, are, those are sort of the key things that I'd sort of take from my experience of coming to the community. Thank you, thank you, Tim. And just one last question, and what has been the role of Tableau Public in your whole journey? Ah, um, so my, yeah. I, I, have a, I have a frustration with Tableau Public, and that's not gonna be nice to hear for a lot of people because I think for a lot of people, Tableau Public is the end all and be all of Tableau. Um, but look, look, let me be frank, I'm a consultant. So, um, you know, building visualizations is about 20% of my time. 80% of my time is actually fixing the data integration challenges in the back end. It's all great having a wonderful visualization and it's beautiful, but if the data behind it isn't accurate, um, that's not going to work. And so a large percentage of my time when I go into clients is actually spent around working on data integration pieces and so on and so forth. And then once that's done, in a business context, typically uh, visualizations don't look like many of the visualizations that are commonly celebrated on Tableau Public. You can draw inspiration from them. You can draw um, a lot of ideas from them. Uh, but in essence, um, the other the other sort of friction I have is that sometimes those solutions that are really, really good require a lot of hacks and a lot of sort of very uh, niche sort of tricks. And I always try and hand over my content to people who can actually pick it up. And so I always ask myself, look, is what I'm doing here out of the box? Could a client open this, uh, look at the Tableau documentation and understand it? And in a lot of my work, the answer needs to be yes. It, I don't have that option. So um, I haven't published some to Tableau Public in a while because I think in my context, it just doesn't offer me um, sort of a platform to to go and sort of be creative because the more creative things for me happens in data prep and also in, you know, in other places I make videos, for example, that's sort of my creative outlet as it were. So that's just my perspective. It's not, it's not, I'm not sort of saying that shouldn't be the case for anyone else. Um, but that's why I, I'm not that active on Tableau Public. If you go to my profile, you'll see I have a few visits and then I haven't published something in a while. So yeah, that's that's my take on that. Perfect. I think with that, uh, thank you, Tim. It was an honor to have you on Disconnect. No worries. And thank you, for sh yeah, thank you for sharing your passion and motivation about Tableau and your journey about it. Okay, no worries. I'm looking forward to connect with people and yeah, reach out on Twitter or LinkedIn. If you've got any further questions, more than happy to field a few. I get to every question. I'm not necessarily fast, but I do get to every single one. So just send me a tweet or something and eventually I will reply. Perfect. With that, thank you everyone for joining. Take care of yourself. Be safe and we'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank Have you. a great weekend.